What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Today we're talking about a new reel that I picked up, a reel that I got to throw some of these guys, the big swim baits. If you all follow me on Instagram, you saw the reel not too long ago. I had a bunch of people asking, will you do kind of an unboxing and talk about it? So uh, that's what we're doing. Today we're taking a look at the Okuma Komodo bait casting reel. Now I picked up the 200 size. These also come in a three and 400 size, but for me, I'm not you know throwing these big, huge, ginormous swim baits where you would need um, a lot more line capacity or something that's going to be taking the line, you know, running a ton of drag out. Um, I'm fishing a lot of the smaller, you know, swim baits. This one is what? Seven inches, two and five eighths ounces. So that's usually what I'm throwing. Like a three ounce swim bait is pretty normal for me. And heck, if you're throwing like a River to Sea S wave or even lighter than that, like the 168 size or whatever. But so that's why I got this, the 200 size Okuma Komodo. I'm digging it. Um, you know, as with all my uh, review, unboxing type deals with reels, uh, I'm going to talk about all the features. We're going to go over to the tabletop and do that. I'm going to go through what I believe are some of the pros and cons of this reel, uh, and then kind of give you my all-around thoughts on it, you know, what I'm going to be using it for, that kind of stuff at the end. So enough yapping here. Let's get over there and uh, take a closer look. Okay, so what are we looking at with this reel? The Okuma Komodo SS. Again, this is that 200 size. The thing I love about this right off is it's got an aluminum frame and aluminum side plates. You don't usually find that for a lot of the low-profile type reels at $200. So... For this being a nice compact 200 size reel, having that aluminum frame and most importantly that handle side plate, that's where you're really going to get that, um, you know, moving and torquing and twisting that you get at a line and, and you can just trash, you know, a graphite frame and side plate reel when you're throwing big heavy lures, especially lures that have a bunch of drag. So I can't stress that enough for a reel like this, you know, where I'm going to be throwing three ounce baits. Um, and you know, some of them are going to have some decent drag to them. If you try to throw like a, a larger spinner bait or something for pike, um, this wouldn't just have to be for swim baits. You know, it would do great as a, a pike reel, something like that. So first off, that was the first thing I noticed that I loved. Now this does only come in a seven, three to one gear ratio in both the right and left hand uh, side. I know that might be kind of a bummer for some people. I know some people would probably like this to come in uh, a little bit slower gear ratio, but this only comes in a right and left seven, three to one. It's got six plus one bearings. I think they say like 20 to 30. I want to say 25 pounds of drag when I was looking um, on the website, I think is what it said. Tackle Warehouse said like 20 to 30 pounds, which is kind of strange. So I'm going to go for the, uh, the middle and say 25 pounds of drag. It's nice because they do put the line capacity on there 12 pounds of mono 170 yards definitely enough line capacity to, to whip a swim bait out there if you're fishing uh, you know a big spinner bait for pike you've got more than enough on there that you need uh, without having to go up to a bigger reel so this is a 200 sized low profile reel this is what I had been using this is the dial Alexa 300 size look at the difference there 300 size reel compared to a smaller 200 size reel uh, and you can see how they achieve that is well let me show you the non-handle side plate comes off because this does have internal centrifugal brakes so this is the coolest side plate thing i have ever seen on a reel there's no sort of things that you have to pull nothing to unscrew nothing to twist literally you just crank this down and the side plate comes off super neat uh i don't know if other companies do that i've personally never owned one like this you know usually they'll have like a little switch on the bottom there's there's none of that you literally just line this up when you go to put it back on like that and click it back on. That's all the side plate is. So I do like that. Super easy. But once you get in here, as I was saying, it does have a six pin centrifugal brake. Um, now, I don't know why all companies don't do this, but you can see they labeled it. So on and off. So when it's clicked up here and locked in place, it's off. But when you take that and click it out or down, whoops, they're moving on me. When you click it down, you'll hear a little audible click like that and now it's moved down so that means it's on and really what's happening is these little discs there you can see the little gray deal under the on that's that little centrifugal brake tab that's going to rub on the inside of this metal ring here uh, the force of the spool when it's spinning is going to push those out and rub on this little race which slows your spool down so that's how that baby works you can see they do have the shorter um, non-connected spool instead of having the you know the long spool shaft that goes through the pinion gear doesn't have all that it just goes right there and stops of course the uh, the bearing on it there but you can see how they achieve that larger line capacity to make it you know a 200 size reel with a, a larger line capacity most of the low low profile reels are like what 110 yards and this centerpiece is a lot bigger right so they've taken that and shrunk it all the way down so that way you can fit more line on here look at that i can hide my 
my whole finger in there, you've got all that to take up all the line inside there. So that's how they achieve that. Still a low profile reel, but giving you the line capacity of a 200 size reel. Now being all aluminum, it does come in at 7.8 ounces, which I don't hate. Like strangely enough, when I'm doing something where I'm really gonna be hitting fish hard on hook sets or when I'm really gonna be grinding fish, I don't mind a reel that's a little heavier. I know it's kind of counterintuitive these days. We're always talking about like how light is the reel that you're using, but for some things, I don't mind a good beefy, heavier, you know, good solid feeling reel. So you get into the star drag, you can see that does have an audible click on it. Spool tension does have an audible click. It does have a good smooth um, click over for the thumb bar. That's one thing I always check. I have had a few reels where you click that in and if you barely like engage the reel, it always seems to stick. So you have to like do those hard to make sure it doesn't stick. This one, I haven't noticed any issues clicking it over real slow. Everything's fine there. And with that seven, three to one gear ratio, it does bring in 31.5 inches of line for every one turn of the handle. Now, one thing I really like is this baby's ready to fish uh, in regards to the handle. I absolutely hate on a, uh, a reel that I'm throwing bigger stuff that I feel like I might really have to winch a fish is a small handle this way. So this is a good handle. I would say it's like a hundred, hundred ish millimeter. That's an aftermarket wind handle that I put on. I don't know how, actually, no, it's not. I'm sorry, this this reel came with that. I put it on a different one, but uh, I don't know what the normal ones are. Usually like 90, I wanna say millimeter, 95 millimeter. This is, I wanna say 100, maybe a little bit longer. I should have measured it, but it's got a good long handle and a thing that people don't talk about enough that I love on a reel where I'm gonna set the hook hard is long handles, the actual knob, this part. You can see how big that knob is. I'm going to do a whole episode on these. I've got a few knobs that I really like, but this would fall into that category. Ready to fish right out there. I don't know how many times when I was fishing my old Revo X, y'all saw that I upgraded the, the handle on that. I had this blue dial one on, and then I went to one of the um, speed spool handles. Uh, Scott over at speed spool just released one. It's got the carbon deal. I'll go into that in more detail, but it's got these long handle knobs. And when you really crank down and go to set the hook, I don't know how many times I've scraped my knuckle on the bottom of this or in between when it's got, you know, kind of that shorter handle knob. So for me, that's a big plus. I absolutely love the stock handles on this. It does have the zirconia line guide in there. So in case you're throwing braid, you don't have to worry about that grooving. CRC coating. So I would assume this is saltwater safe. It didn't actually say in the description, but it does have that corrosion resistant CRC coating on it. So I would guess this is safe to use in saltwater. Just make sure you're rinsing your stuff down. I don't get to fish the salt, but that is a question I get on reels. Another big thing I like is the anti-reverse is solid. One thing I'll do with reels is hold the handle backwards and then test how much play is there in the spool. You can see there very, very little at all. And I think that's important, especially for something where you're going to be setting the hook hard. You know, if that anti-reverse goes out, you're kind of up a creek without a, a paddle, as they say. But no sort of play there. The handle, there's not a bunch of weird like movement in the handle. Um, everything feels solid there. Feels good, pretty smooth reel overall, I'm digging it. So enough with the tabletop stuff on the uh, Akuma Komodo, let's go over there and talk about some of the pros and cons. Okay, now that we've taken an up close look at this reel, what do I feel are some of the pros and cons? The biggest pro to me is this thing comes ready to fish. Um, like I showed you, those large handles, that's a big thing for me. I cannot stand the little tiny handles on something when I'm gonna be cranking a big bait or you know something where I'm potentially gonna have to get it out of uh, you know a spot cover like when I'm frogging and stuff. So for me specifically with this, if I'm targeting big bass and I'm throwing larger lures, there's a good chance I'm really gonna have to crank down on it. And I mean, this, this handle feels great. It's a good size and it's got those large knobs. I can't believe that's not something that more people talk about, the large knobs. And I'm gonna do a whole, like I said over there, a whole video on handle knobs specifically. I've got a few lined up, but I mean, it comes ready to fish. It's a, a small, still a low profile reel. It's only a 200 size reel. So um, as opposed to that, the Daiwa Win, that you know, a little bit bigger 300 size and even 400 sizes of these reels, it's still manageable. You know, so it's not a, a big, huge gargantuan reel. It's not one of the big round reels. To me, those aren't the most comfortable to fish. So I like that it's good, ready to go. I can slap this on the rod and go and I can throw swim baits and not have to worry about changing a bunch of stuff. Um, so handles are good, feels good in hand. I just, I like that that you take it out and it's ready to go. Another big pro is that it's an aluminum frame and aluminum side plates. This is just over $200 for this reel and there's not a lot of reels you go out and find that have uh, an aluminum frame and an aluminum handle side plate, you know, right around that $200 mark. There obviously are some out there, the Tatula, um, that's the first one that comes to mind because I have that one. 
There are a few others, but a lot of the reels don't come that way. Even at $200, a lot of the low profile bait casting reels don't come with an aluminum frame and an aluminum handle side plate. And the crazy thing about this one is it comes with an aluminum frame and both side plates are aluminum. So everything on this reel is aluminum, side plates, um, frame everything, which which is hard to find honestly nowadays. And it just helps that much more for those larger swim baits. Um, if you've ever thrown like a big musky bucktail, when I'm talking about um, baits that have a lot of drag, you know, if you're throwing like a big spinner bait with this, you know, say you're, you're targeting musky or pike or whatever, no issue, no issue with that. You've got a good crank and handle. Maybe the only thing would be if they made this in a, a, a lower gear ratio. So like I said, this is the seven three to one. You know, if they had like a 6.5 or something like that, that would be, that's kind of on the con side is that this only comes in a 7.3 gear ratio in this 200 size, but otherwise you're covered everywhere else. You've got an aluminum frame, aluminum side plates. You're not going to have to worry about that torquing and twisting if you were to have, uh, you know, a graphite frame and graphite side plate reel. So I love that. Now when I come to the cons, like I just said, the first thing was only coming in that one gear ratio. You know, for some of the a lot of people out there they like a slower gear ratio for things where they're going to have to torque right you get more torquing power you don't have to work as hard if you're throwing a bait that's got you know more drag it's a little bit harder to reel in that lower gear ratio it's making less lev revolutions per handle turn so you're not having to work as hard um, so that was kind of the first con to it i wish it came in a few more and then the second one was the handle side plate not the ease of use or anything like i said i've never seen one like this and i flip and love it but it is one of those reels that you have to get inside to access those centrifugal brakes inside there. So you've got to take the handle side plate or the uh, opposite side plate off to do that. So that's the only thing I wish that came with, you know, like a, a free swing um, side plate deal where it stayed connected. But of course, that's going to add more money to it. So again, they're, you know, trying to come in around $200 on this, I would assume that's why they didn't do it. So it, it is going to kind of be a give and take. But again, I do like that to take it off and put it back on. There's no like sort of knobs or anything you have to mess with. It's just click it on and click it off. That's really one of the slickest side plate taken off deals I've seen. Okay, so how about the rod and line on this? I'm still kind of torn on the line. I know some guys like to go with, you know, like a 20, 25 pound fluorocarbon for their swim baits. Some guys like braid. Now the rod, I'm gonna jump into that real quick. This is that Phoenix M1 swim bait rod. And I loved this rod, absolutely loved it. It felt great. I didn't get a hookup on any bass with the big swim baits, but the rod itself, awesome. This rod is a medium fast action or moderate fast action, some companies will call it, rated for lures one to six ounces. It's an eight foot heavy. Feels awesome in hand. It's light for an eight foot rod. It doesn't feel like a complete pool stick. Being a moderate fast action, it's gonna have some bend to it, some taper, you know, soft, which is what I want for those treble hook baits. I don't want a rod that's completely like a telephone pole. I throw it out there and it won't bend. I want to keep those fish pinned, but have enough power to set those hooks. They're going to be bigger treble hooks. So this is the rod I'm using. Um, as I was showing you over there, this is that Lexo Win reel, and this is the 300 size. So this one's going to go back on my smaller musky rod. Um, and again, you can see the size difference there, that 300 size here compared to the 200 size here. A lot bigger reel. Great reel. I loved it. Um, I don't think I've ever backlashed this reel, knock on wood. Been a killer reel, but you know, for swim baits and stuff, I, I like this 200 size. I think it's gonna do a little bit better for me. Um, still get good long casts, but it's, you know, that, that small, nice compact frame. So that's what I'm gonna put it on here. And I know a lot of guys like to go braid. I know some guys go fluorocarbon. I'm, I'm honestly a little torn. Comment below and let me know what you use for larger swim baits if you throw them. Some people don't, I know, but let, comment below and let me know what you use. I've had some people say, you know, I've been heartbroken with fluorocarbon with those big baits. Um, some people say you always want to go braid, then you can go to a, a you know, a fluorocarbon leader if you want to. I'm a little torn there. Not sure what I'm going to do, but that's going to be the swim bait setup and I cannot wait to use it. So do me a favor and comment below. Let me know what kind of content you want to see coming up with the big swim baits. I'm going to dedicate some whole days to it where I'm just going to take a couple swim bait combos and that's it. I've got to catch a fish on a swim bait, a big, you know, glide swim bait is what I'm talking about, that type of thing this year. I throw paddle tail swim baits all the time. I'm extremely comfortable with those, but these big glide baits have, have kind of befuddled me. So 
Let me know if, if I go out for a day and throw them all day and don't catch anything, I'm still going to post something as a way to learn. I know a lot of you out there are getting into the swim bait game, so at least we can talk about, you know, how the reel casts, how the, you know, the equipment performs. I've done some other videos where I've went out and, you know, thrown it for a few hours and just not caught anything. So we're going to dedicate some whole days to that, but that's going to do it for me. Today's subscribed fishing friend is Joey. Joey has wanted me to pick up one of these for I don't know how long. Um, he said he has a Komodo and loves it, so... Comment below and let me know if there's another reel that you'd like to see reviewed. I've got a couple old reels that I am super, super excited to show you. So, got some more stuff coming down that pipe. But otherwise, thank you all so very much for watching. I need to edit. Uh, thank you all for watching. And until next time. Mm -hmm.